Shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati and I am live from Galilee, from right next to the Sea of Galilee. Um, it's uh, five minutes before 7 p.m. here on um, February 24th, 2018. This is Saturday night. It's the end of the Sabbath, February 24th, 2018. And in just about a few minutes, we are going to start our uh, very short Facebook Live Middle East current event updates. A lot uh, has happened in the last few days, and uh, it's time to update you about that one. But before that, um, just so you know that um, Israel is packed with tourists. Um, I'm, I'm leading right now a tour with Pastor Steve Berger from uh, Grace Chapel in um, Leapers Fork, Tennessee. Uh, in the area of Franklin and, and Nashville of Tennessee. We have a, a group of 56 people, most of them first-timers. They have the time of their life. Israel is so beautiful, so green, so lush. All the streams and all the uh, the little creeks are just exploding with water. It's all, I mean, the flowers. And the, we started seeing bird migration. I mean, the birds are now flying back to Europe from Africa uh, at the Hula Valley uh, as of yesterday, they counted 51,000 cranes. Those are the uh, smaller white birds with long necks. And um, they're on their way back to Europe. 51,000 cranes in one lake. Um, it's uh, quite a scene, uh, quite a sight. And uh, apart from that, we have record number of tourists arriving uh, from almost every corner of the world Tourism is blooming, and we're excited. You know, if, if somebody thought that by shooting down an F-16 a couple weeks ago, um, they're going to somehow uh, change something here, they're very wrong. Across the border, people are killing each other like crazy here. We had the, probably the one of the most amazing quarters uh, as far as growth in our in our economy more than 3.6 percent growth in one quarter this is quite fascinating the israeli currency is officially the strongest currency in the world today and um it's it's quite a, a remarkable thing um let me see where you guys are from are you watchmen from where from the u.s i see a lot of people from texas I'm not expecting too many from the Southeast Asia because this is already nighttime there. But uh, let's uh, let's see how many people from the United States. I see people from Kansas. I see people from the Netherlands, uh, Mississippi, uh, Philippines. Oh, so we do have people from over there. Suzanne, hello. People from Germany, people from Southern California, the UK. People from the more from the Netherlands, um, people from Colorado, from uh, Yuba City in California, uh, UK, Maryland, Ontario, California. Wonderful! One, I'm I'm so amazed. You know, uh, yesterday when I received my group at the airport, um, I was quite shocked because there's a group of. Uh, Ethiopians that uh, approach me. Apparently, they are Ethiopians that live in Stockholm, Sweden, and they're watching Behold Israel. They're watching me live um, on, and, and watching the Bible teachings and the current event update. So I was quite uh, taken by it, you know, uh, to, to have Ethiopians living in in in, Swi in the Sweden. And watching, and then they approached me, and they just wanted to encourage me and to bless me uh, for uh, for what I'm do for what I'm doing. So thank you very much for all of your support. It warms my heart, especially in times when the enemy is really attacking, and uh, you are asking yourself you know, a few times a day, "Do I really want to do this?" So thank you very much. So we see that we are. Um, accumulating more and more viewers on Facebook Live, and we're going to start in just about a few seconds, um, our official Facebook Live current Middle East current event updates. So, 
Ladies and gentlemen, shalom and good evening from Galilee. This is Amir Tsarfati. I'm reporting from the area of the Sea of Galilee. I'm at the Scott's Hotel with my group. We just arrived here a few minutes ago. Um, and there were several things that I, I thought it is important to update you about it. And, um, and uh, we're going to start this broadcast um, with a prayer. So let's start. Father, we thank you so much uh, for your word and for your promises. We thank you for your love and compassion. We also thank you, Father, that uh, in you and in your word, we can find our, our refuge and our comfort. Your uh, word uh, cleanses us and purifies us. And your word is truth. And so we thank you for your word and we thank you for the things that we see around us. We thank you for the wisdom that you give us through your word and through the prophets to understand the times and the seasons in which we live. We thank you, Father, that you want your children to, to know your plans. And we thank you, Father, that you want your children to understand that which is going on, to stay sober and awake and not to fall asleep as others do. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we want to stay um, we want to stay as close as we can to your word and we don't want to speculate, we do not want to make up stories, we do not want to set dates and times and in and, and hours. We just want to know uh, what's going on around the world to understand it through the lens of your word. And Father, we ask that through all of that, your name will be glorified and we, the people of God, will be drawn closer and closer to you. May you give us also the boldness in these last days to preach the word to as many people as we can. We thank you and we bless you and we ask all of this in the matchless and the most beautiful name of the Holy One of Israel that walked right here 2,000 years ago, of the one from Galilee, of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the, the, the King of the Jews, the King of Israel, the light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of his people Israel in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you again, and uh, God bless you guys. Uh, this is Amil Salfati. I'm here from Galilee, and I just want to update you on uh, qu quickly on a few things that happened over the last 24 hours. First of all, as you probably heard, I did report that yesterday. Um, the United States administration, the, um, the State Department, decided in a symbolic act to not only um, to not only generally move the embassy of the United States to Jerusalem, but do it on May 14, 19, uh, excuse me, 2018, which is the 70th anniversary uh, to the um, um, Declaration of Independence of Israel. It just uh, it's going to be exactly 70 years after David Ben Gurion read the Declaration of Independence in the Tel Aviv Museum. And this is that same day that President Truman immediately um, issued a statement that the United States of America is recognizing the, uh, the government of the Jewish people. He didn't even know the name of the country, so he said the Jewish state. And then when he finally heard what the name is going to be, he crossed it and he says the state of Israel, and he signed it. Harry Truman with his own um, handwriting. So it's, it's a very special thing. And I think that 70 years after America recognized Israel as a state, America is going to uh, do that which America probably should have done since 1948, and that is to have its embassy located in the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. Um, we don't have a building for the embassy. We have a, a big fairly new building for the consulate that is there for a few years already. So the consulate will probably function, and I'm talking about the, the, the one in the um, western part of southwestern part of the city of Jerusalem. It will function as the interim embassy, but at the same time, the embassy in Tel Aviv will continue to function because most of the diplomats live there and they have their offices there. 
in the um, consulate general in Jerusalem um, will continue providing consular um, services such as visas and um, and passports and all of that. So, ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America, it's official, the United States of America is about to symbolically move the embassy to Jerusalem on the 70th anniversary of Israel's independence on May 14, 1948. And the only two loud negative voices we heard re, uh, about this thing is uh, A, from the Palestinians, of course, that are extremely angry. For the Palestinians, May 14, 1948 is the Nakba. Nakba in Arabic means the disaster. Our independence is their disaster. Isn't that interesting that, um, you know, God is the one who brought us back to the land. He's the one who gave us this land. And it is a disaster for other people. And uh, I just don't understand that. How can people say that we believe in the same God when it's that God that brought us back? You know, I have to remind all of you that biblically, it was and not only biblically, but also uh, in, in, in factually, it was impossible for the Jewish people to survive the Holocaust to physically return to their homeland and to start a nation and to be 70 years later where they are. It's impossible. There is no textbook that can explain the miracle of Israel. But what people tend to forget is that the whole act of the return of the Jewish people back to their land is not an act of man. It's an act of God. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37, in the same description of the valley of the dry bones, the Bible says, I, the Lord, have promised it and performed it. In other words, the Lord says, not only that I'm going, I'm promising to you right now that I'm going to bring you back, I will perform it. In other words, if somebody has a problem with the return of the Jews back to their land, their land, the Bible says, I'll put you on your own soil. If, there is, if somebody has a problem, that really don't come to us. Come to him. Only God could have done such a, a revival. A revival of three things. A revival of the land that was desolated and was dead. A revival of a nation that was, two-thirds of it was dead already by, by Adolf Hitler. And a revival of the language. So those who came from 80 different countries could even communicate with one another. So... Israel is a, is a miracle, um, and uh, we cannot take the credit to ourselves. This is something that is, you know, apart from God, there's no, you know, our first prime minister, who wasn't, who wasn't at all a Bible-believing Jew or, or a, uh, may I say, uh, a, an Orthodox Jew, David Ben-Gurion said the following thing, In the Middle East, if you don't believe in miracles, you're not realistic. And, and you know, Israel is, is the biggest proof to uh, miracles that exist and uh, the, they are the day-to-day -day life here. So we are back in our land and, and now we're back in our city and America is finally recognizing it and, and the Palestinians are angry. Not only that you're moving the embassy, but you're doing that on the day that we mark as a day of disaster. Well, I'm sorry I offend you, but... Uh, <laughs> On the day of Amai independence, there's no better day than that day to, to uh, move the embassy. And the whole idea of President Trump moving the embassy to begin with was to meet the date of Israel's 70th anniversary. So I think that uh, the advices that he received from both diplomats, but mostly from pastors around is... is um, this is a, a year of, uh, uh, of, of 70, which is, uh, uh, could be a length of generation, that there is nothing better than, and, than doing that on that year. Um, and uh, the declaration was given in 2017 to be the year of Jubilee from the reunification of Jerusalem in 1967. And now, of course, it will be 70 years since Israel was born and uh, it's, it's very, very significant. Now, to say that because of the move of the embassy to Jerusalem, now we know, for example, that the rapture is about to take place, I wouldn't go that far. In, in fact, uh, one of the things I want to remind all of you is not to set days and hours 
and to remember that we see a, an amazing, you know, amazing development and, and Bible prophecy is being fulfilled in, in, in pace that, uh, faster than ever before. Yes, we see those things, uh, but we have to be very careful that, um, you know, such events are not setting days or hours to anything. We have to be very careful. I, I even wrote a short commentary, excuse me, short devotional uh, yesterday, and I posted it on on my uh, Facebook page. Um, you know, when Israel was sent to the exile to um, Babylon, the prophet Jeremiah said it's going to be for 70 years exactly. And throughout those 70 years, um, False prophets and magicians and diviners all started telling Israel, hey, you're going to be back earlier than 70 years. And they started setting days and hours. And the Lord said in Jeremiah 29, do not believe those false prophets. Do not believe those diviners. Do not believe those who read in the stars and the moon and the sun. Don't believe those. Uh, you know, you will be, you will return at the set time of the Lord. Now, when when the number was clear, 70, and still people were false prophets. Can you imagine when it's not clear? Because no one knows the day of, of our departure from here. Not the angels, just the Father alone. Just that's what Jesus said in, in Luke 21. So my point is, if when it was known that there were so many false prophets, can you imagine how many there are now when it's not known? Too many. Too many. So let's not follow false prophets. Let's uh, uh, stay uh, with our anticipation and with our excitement. And I believe, you know me, I believe in the very soon rapture of the church. I believe it's closer than ever, but we have to be very careful. Not everything that happened around us is immediately telling us it's tomorrow or it's the day after tomorrow. In fact, we have to be ready for it to be in two seconds. Uh -huh. And if it will happen in two seconds, we have to be ready. Um, so we have to be excited about the soon rapture. We have to be ready, but don't fall into that trap of, of setting hours and days. Now, so the American embassy is going to move officially to Jerusalem on May 14, 2018. This year, in just about three months, two and a half months from now, this is... Amazing. These are great news. And again, I started by saying the Palestinians don't like that. But also the, the Turkish Sultan, the president, just released a, a statement saying this is a, a hindrance for the peace. Isn't that amazing that of all people, you heard nothing from Egypt, you have nothing, heard nothing from Jordan, nothing from Saudi Arabia, nothing from the Gulf states. And the only ones you're going to hear from is, is Russia, Iran, and Turkey. And the alliance that is forming itself right now. Um, so this is crazy, crazy, crazy what's going on. I, I also want to report that Russia has officially uh, declared Syria as a testing ground for its latest weapons. They don't have any other war that they fight anywhere else around the world. So they bring to Syria their latest weapons or weapons of war and they test them in Syria. Um, the, 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 the latest thing that, uh, that we saw uh, that is coming is, of course, the, um, the Sukhoi 57, the, the, the stealth um, um, jet fighter uh, that they have, Sukhoi 57, Su-57. And uh, this is the fifth generation of that aircraft. And he carries some uh, rockets that can go up, up to 200 kilometers uh, um, to, to hit a target, which is, which is almost twice uh, the distance of what the F-22 has right now that the Americans um, develop. So um, quite, uh, quite a thing to, to see that the, um, the Russians are, are doing right now in, in Syria. The, um, you, you have to understand that we, the Israelis, detected those... Um, um, those um, T fifty seven, I mean uh, Su fifty seven, um, and we did that uh, because Israel has a a satellite called um, Eros, and uh, in, that satellite has uh, of the company called ImageSat, 
um, basically um, today released um, pictures of uh, the uh, Syrian airbase called Khmeimim. This is the airbase, by the way, that Assad came to visit Putin or just about a month and a half ago, I think I showed it online, and he was humiliated by the Russian president over there. Um, what happened is that there are, um, this is, by the way, on the Mediterranean coast, and um, the Russians cannot test those uh, uh, jets um, anywhere else, because there are no wars that the Russians are involved with besides the one in, in Syria right now. So they're bringing them, bringing them over, and they're testing them on the Syrians right now. This is, uh, I mean, it, it, is, it is terrible. Um, and I want you to know that, um, as, as I said before, um, the SU-57 uh, is the fifth generation of um, the Sukhoi aircraft. On Syrian soil, we have also Sukhoi 35s and Sukhoi 25s. And, um, and as I said before, we are talking about the latest um, aircraft um, that the uh, Russian aerospace industry has developed. And it's in Syria right now. We have about four of them, and they're testing them on Syrian um, targets. Um, one more thing I want you to know is that uh, Russia is blocking any... Uh, any um, condemnation of Syria in the United Nations Security Council uh, for what is going on in the eastern suburbs of Damascus right now. 400,000 Sunni Muslims are being butchered and massacred right now, and the world says nothing. Over 100 children were killed, and I just don't get it. I, my heart broke today. I saw a, I'm, I'm following the Arab media. That's why I know so much about what's going on there because the rest of the world could care less about it. We don't hear anything from the UN. You don't hear anything from the Europeans. You don't hear anything if, um, from um, uh, the rest of the world. I mean, and, and the only ones that are screaming for help are the locals that are taking videos with their phones. And I, there's a, a video that literally uh, broke my heart of a father that uh, um, all he wanted is to hold his two-year-old baby one last time. After the baby was already uh, dead, and uh, he took it from uh, the cart that was loaded with the dead corpse of, of, of children, and he, he just wanted to give her one last hug. Um, it, it really broke my heart uh, to see that. Um, I, I know that it may not be the best thing to show you, but maybe that will enable you uh, to understand what's going on there. So let me see if I can uh, if I can if I can show it to you. Um, I'm gonna try my best right now. Um, here it is. So I'm gonna take my phone right now, and I'm going to um, just put it on. There you go. So a cart full of dead bodies, and he just took his baby for a last hug, for a last hug, for just one minute before they take her away. And it's a heartbreaking story that, um, that is going on over there. And the world is saying nothing. The world could care less. And... Um, in, in, in the double standard of what's going on there, you know, when Israel is trying to defend itself from aggression, the world is saying Israel is not allowed to do anything. But when they butcher their own people, everybody's okay with that. And we, the Israelis, for us, this is a heartbreaking thing. I mean, I, I, I mean, I know this is it's great in Israel right now, but what's going on in the eastern suburbs of Damascus right now? are beyond atrocities. I mean, you, it's hell on earth 
for the people. To have in, in, in less than four or five days more than 600 dead, of which 100 are children. Where is the world? I, I just don't get it. I don't understand it. This is crazy, 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 crazy. And, um, and right now, um, there's a, another mini war going on between Bashar al-Assad and the Turkish Sultan. I mean, it's all about the enclave in northern Syria of Efrain that the, the Turks surrounded. Uh, Bashar al-Assad is bringing more and more troops inside and, and, and uh, Erdogan is bombing them. Uh, he kills scores of them. So now, you know, you've, had, you've got that war going on the last 48 hours as well. So, um, you know, people ask me about, are we watching Isaiah uh, 17? Is Damascus being destroyed? Guys, Damascus is being destroyed by its own people. Um, uh, of course, I don't believe that the utter destruction of Damascus will be that way. But unfortunately, I must say, they already destroyed their own city uh, more than anything that Israel can ever do. Um, unless um, a powerful weapon is being used um, more than that. Guys, um, this is it. Um, not all of this is good news, unfortunately. I mean, the embassy move is, is a great news, but the rest, as far as what's, what's going on in Syria, is very bad news. The Russian involvement and the Russian way of, of not allowing the UN to even deal with what's going on over there right now is sickening. And um, I just don't know what to say besides um, the world should be ashamed of itself and, um, and the UN should be ashamed of itself. This is just too crazy. I, 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 I don't want to stop watching those things because I always want to understand what's going on there. But it breaks my heart. Last thing I want to re report is that a uh, couple days ago... Um, about four or five days ago, I would say, Hezbollah uh, released a, a, a video saying that they are about to uh, destroy the oil rigs and the gas rigs um, that Israel built off the shores of the Mediterranean. Um, again, you understand, you know, we can talk about politics all day long, but the minute we talk about gas and oil, this is what wars in the Middle East begin. And it's all about that. The, the hook in the jaw of Russia to come to the Middle East is the gas and the oil. The hook in the jaw of Erdogan to come into the Middle East down towards uh, Syria. And now he's looking into Cyprus and Greece is the gas and the oil that was found. And, uh, and of course, um, we, we all know that um, Iran is also part of this party. So... If something is going to happen to the oil rigs in the, where we, we, are, we were getting our natural gas, you understand that that's probably going to be a red line that Israel will not allow to cross. And um, I'm just thinking out loud here, will that be the trigger for the coming war that Ezekiel described? Maybe. Good chance it could be. If that's the thing that brought them all the way down, that could be also the thing that will cause us to say enough is enough. Um, this is it, guys. Not a long one. A short one. Keep praying. Keep praying for the people of, of Damascus. Keep praying for the people that are trapped between all those gangsters that are all around. Keep praying for those people to find Jesus, to find the Lord. To, they need hope. There is no hope over there. There is no hope. Over there is like a hell on earth for these people. Uh, pray for also the salvation of the people of Israel. And um, somebody asked me today on the bus, if the rapture is so near, do you believe, Amir, that God will bring about one last great revival and I think if the people of God are going to ask for it and pray for it and work hard for it I believe God is going to honor that if we 
only count the hours until the rapture comes and do nothing. And if we don't share the gospel, if we don't get out of our comfort zone and, and do something, it won't happen. But uh, ask and you shall receive. And I think that uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all the other things will be added unto, unto us. So if we want a revival, we need to ask for a revival, and we need to pray for a revival, and we will see a revival before we're out of here. So we need that awakening, we need that revival, and we need to pray for such thing. And um, again, it's not a bad thing to ask Jesus to return. Even so, come Lord Jesus, the Bible says, the Spirit and the Bride are saying, come. So we want him to come, but we want him first to come in a way that uh, people will uh, be awakened and, and, and there will be a revival. And then, of course, when he comes physically to take us, um, that's what we, we want. Like As the Bible says in Second Peter chapter 2, that God is not uh, slacking as some, count, as, as, as some count slackness, but he's long-suffering, not willing that any will perish, but all will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. In other words, God did not destine people to, to hell. God wants all to come to the saving knowledge. Of course, in his foreknowledge, he knows that not all will choose but he wants all. So God is not interested in some people, and in some he's not. He wants all people. For God so loved the world, not just the church, that he gave his only begotten Son, that he whosoever believe in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So I urge you in these last days not to be in your comfort zone, to go out and preach the gospel and get ready. Your life should be ready. Your family, your friends, don't be afraid to speak out. These are the last days. This is the last hour. You know, sometimes I'm thinking about the denial of Jesus by Peter. Sometimes you don't have to deny Jesus by saying that I don't know him. Sometimes it's enough by not saying that you do know him. Um, it's, it's, it's another form of denial. So let's, let's speak out. And remember, being watchmen requires you to speak out, requires you to say something. You are in a higher position watching and looking and seeing and knowing and understanding. You need to warn the people. You need to speak out. We need to be watchmen on the walls. So uh, thank you again for listening. This was a short update from around the Sea of Galilee. And why don't we conclude this update with the Aaronic blessing. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yichunecha. Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face towards you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his shalom, his peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. That's the peace that Syria doesn't have now because they don't have Jesus. That's the peace that the world can never understand. It's the peace that is everywhere and at all time that only the, the, the Lord of peace can give. And so... Um, I pray that this will be the portion of all of us this week, this coming week. Thank you, and God bless you, and shalom from uh, the Sea of Galilee.